Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Vox Agent is made by AI for business executives that work with AI. We are diving deep today into, well, what I think is probably the biggest strategic shift happening in enterprise AI right now. It really is significant. Yeah, because for the last few years, it feels like most companies have been, you know, experimenting, playing around with prompts, seeing what these models can do. That's right, the experimental phase. Yeah, that phase. It's ending. We're moving into something uh, much more structured, something called context engineering. That's the term, and it's crucial. Our focus today, based on a really thorough research report from Vox Agent, is digging into what this means strategically for you, the executives listening. Okay. Because we're at this, uh, this inflection point. How we use AI in really high-stakes situations, it's changing fundamentally. And what really defines that point? What's the big change for businesses? It's when we start demanding reliability. We need AI to move past just generating sort of plausible content, stuff that sounds good, sounds smart. But might be completely wrong. Exactly. We need it to be a dependable, almost deterministic engine for the decisions that really matter. We're talking verifiable accuracy now. Because, I mean, if you're making these huge financial calls or big strategic moves, plausible just isn't good enough, is it? Not even close. The report puts it perfectly. For these critical decisions, sounding right is not the same as being right. That really hits home. You need systems grounded in actual facts, your facts. Precisely. And that means we have to build the infrastructure, the systems that guarantee that grounding. Okay, so let's get into it. Context engineering, it sounds frankly a lot heavier than just tweaking prompts. Can you define it clearly? How is it really different from prompt engineering, which most people kind of get now? Okay, so context engineering isn't just about tweaking, it's a whole systematic discipline. It's about designing, building, and then managing the flow of very specific, timely, and crucially accurate information to the AI model. To ground it. To ground its outputs explicitly in reality. Think of it like this. It's less about tuning the engine and more about building the entire super reliable fuel delivery system for it. It's really an architectural thing, not just a clever trick. Got it. So if prompt engineering is about making the AI understand my question better, mm -hmm. what's context engineering optimizing? That's the key difference. Prompt engineering focuses on the input question, how you phrase the query. Context engineering, on the other hand, is all about optimizing the data environment, the universe of facts the AI uses to reason. Okay. It's making sure the model has access to the right curated facts exactly when it needs them so the answer it gives is trustworthy. And this really gets at that intelligence gap, doesn't it? We know these big language models, they sound brilliant, but they don't actually know anything specific about my company right now. Exactly right. They lack situational awareness. They don't know your inventory levels from an hour ago or the specific terms you just negotiated in a contract. And that lack of real-time proprietary data access, mm. that's where the mistakes happen, the hallucinations. That's a huge source of them, yes, those costly errors. Context engineering tackles this head on. It's not just about reducing risk, though that's huge. Mm -hmm. It actually changes the AI's role. How so? It shifts the AI from being this sort of um, unpredictable creative partner. Sometimes helpful, sometimes weirdly off base. Right. Into a precise analytical engine. The main goal isn't just plausible creativity anymore. It's about mitigating risk and ensuring the integrity of your decisions. The outputs have to be, as the report says, verifiably accurate and relevant. Okay. Verifiable accuracy, risk mitigation. That definitely signals moving beyond just demos into serious production level use. And that sounds like it needs more than just a software patch. It sounds like architecture. It absolutely does. So what kind of infrastructure are we talking about here? What needs to be built to support this context discipline? Yeah, it's a big shift. You really have to move beyond the old way of thinking, you know, those separate siloed data warehouses. Mm -hmm. They just don't cut it anymore. So what replaces them? You need to build what people are calling a dynamic data ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Some are even using the term system of record for context. It's about connecting and constantly streaming data from everywhere. Everywhere. Like what? Legacy databases, yeah. Mm -hmm. But also all your SaaS apps, maybe IoT devices spitting out real-time data, even things like internal meeting notes potentially. Whoa. That sounds like a massive undertaking, especially integrating those older legacy systems. That's always a headache. It is a major challenge. And honestly, the biggest hurdle often isn't just technical. What is it then? It's organizational friction getting different departments who often own their data to agree on quality access standards it requires real leadership so executives need to drive a cultural change yes a shift towards seeing data 
not just as historical records, but as this dynamic live resource that feeds intelligence constantly. It means breaking down those silos, which, yes, takes real investment and cultural change. Okay, so the data needs to be flowing, connected. But mm -hmm. raw data, even if it's fast, can still be messy, right? Ambiguous. Absolutely. Raw data streams need interpretation. Revenue might mean three different things in three different systems. So how does the AI make sense of that? That brings us to probably the most critical piece of this new architecture, the context processing and enrichment layer. You'll often hear it called the semantic layer. A semantic layer. Okay, what does that do? Think of it as the translator or maybe the interpreter. It takes all that raw, messy data flowing in and transforms it into intelligent, machine-readable context. It adds meaning. Precisely. It injects the business meaning. It resolves those ambiguities that the different revenue definitions. It defines relationships between data points, maps out hierarchies. Essentially, it builds a unified understanding, like a knowledge graph, so the AI knows how everything connects to your actual business goals right now. Without that layer. The AI might be incredibly fast, but it could easily draw the wrong conclusions because it fundamentally misunderstood what the data meant. Okay, this is where it clicks together with something people might already know. RAG. Retrieval Augmented Generation. For a while, that seemed like the answer for grounding AI. Where does RAG fit into this bigger picture? Yeah, that's a great point. The real insight, the sort of aha moment here is realizing that RAG isn't the whole strategy. It's actually just one component, albeit a very important one, within this broader context engineering framework. So RAG is like a tool in the toolbox. Exactly. Our egg is the mechanism that does the retrieval. It pulls in the relevant verified documents or data snippets at the moment the AI needs them to ground its answer. But, and this is key, RAG can only retrieve information that the rest of the context engineering architecture, especially that semantic layer, has already prepared, curated, cleaned up, and indexed for it. So garbage in, garbage out, even with RAG, if the context feeding it is bad. The RAG retrieval will be poor, or it might pull the wrong thing. The quality of the context pipeline dictates the quality of the RAG output. Makes sense. Like, having bad plumbing doesn't matter how fancy the tap is. Okay, let's switch gears to the payoff. Executives need to see the ROI to justify what sounds like a pretty significant investment. Can you give us some concrete examples where this deep context really delivers measurable value? Definitely. Let's start with something like hyper-personalization, maybe in retail. Context-aware AI right. isn't just looking at your last few purchases anymore. Right. It integrates dynamic, real-time stuff. Right. What you're browsing right now, your precise location, the device you're on, time of day, even things like the local weather where you are. Can you paint a picture? Like a quick example. Sure. Imagine you're browsing for, say, hiking boots online. An older system might just see your past history and offer a generic discount. Yeah, 10% off, whatever. <laughs> right. But a context-aware system, it sees you're in Denver, it notes it's actually raining there right now, you're on your phone, and maybe your GPS shows you're only a few blocks from one of their physical stores. Mm. So the AI instantly generates a super relevant offer. Mm -hmm. Something like, hey, it's wet out, get free expedited local delivery on those boots, or grab them in store nearby right now for 15% off. Ah, much more compelling. Exactly. That direct boost in conversion, that improved loyalty, you can trace it right back to the depth and timeliness of the context the AI had. That's powerful for customer experience. What about areas focused purely on the numbers, like finance or supply chain decisions? Great question. In finance, think about fraud detection or risk management. Hmm. Context-aware AI analyzes a transaction not in isolation, but alongside a whole stream of contextual clues. Like what? Like the user's recent location history, the security reputation of the device they're using, their spending patterns over the last day or two, maybe even real-time market sentiment data. So it builds a much richer picture of the risk. A much richer, more accurate picture. This leads to fewer false alarms, which are costly, and much more reliable risk scoring. And similarly, in supply chain, AI can look at real-time logistics data, factor in weather forecasts, maybe even analyze geopolitical risk alerts. To do what? Optimize routes. Optimize RITs, adjust inventory levels dynamically, predict disruptions, basically cutting costs and making the whole chain more resilient. And then there's healthcare. You mentioned high stakes here. The cost of getting the context wrong could be immense. It's potentially the highest stakes area. Context is just non-negotiable for things like clinical decision support. The AI must have access to the patient's complete medical history, maybe their genomic data, real-time vital signs from monitors. All integrated. All integrated to suggest a, a personalized treatment plan. If the AI misses one critical piece of context, 
maybe a recent medication change buried in a different system's notes, the recommendation could be ineffective or worse, dangerous. Which implies we need new ways to measure success too, right? Not just technical accuracy. Absolutely. The metrics are shifting. It's less about just the model's general accuracy and more about tangible business impact. How much did we reduce time to decision? Did we measurably improve our risk mitigation scores? That kind of thing. Okay, the potential is huge, clearly transformative. But let's talk about the hurdles. Besides the technical complexity of overhauling data systems, what about the risks, especially security risks, when you're pulling all this sensitive data together? That's a critical point. Concentrating all this valuable contextual data definitely creates a bigger, juicier target for attackers. The attack vector we're hearing a lot about now is prompt injection. Prompt injection. How does that work in this context? It's pretty sophisticated. Because the AI is now reasoning over these vast, internal proprietary data sets, attackers try to hide malicious instructions within the data the AI ingests. Hidden inside the data itself? Like where? It could be embedded in something that looks harmless, like a customer review file that gets ingested, or maybe a shared document, or even a seemingly normal entry in a database that the AI reads. And if one of those hidden instructions gets through, what's the danger? Well, the AI is designed to follow instructions, right? So it could be tricked. Yeah. It might leak sensitive customer data, maybe mm. execute unauthorized financial transactions, or even change important system settings, all because it was following a hidden malicious command. Wow. So your security needs to be context aware too. It absolutely does. You need security frameworks that understand these new risks. And related to that, I imagine governance and ethics become even more critical, especially in regulated fields like finance and healthcare. Non-negotiable. Yeah. You need a really robust AI governance framework from the start. It's not an afterthought. What does that involve? It has to proactively tackle things like algorithmic bias. If your contextual data reflects historical biases, especially in healthcare, the AI could actually make health disparities worse. That's a serious concern. It is. And you also need transparency. You need to be able to audit why the AI made a particular high stakes decision, which specific context, which verified data sources did it rely on. That traceability is essential. So if context engineering is the foundational work we're doing now, what's the future it enables? What does the enterprise of tomorrow look like with this capability? The vision many people are talking about is the agenting enterprise. Mm -hmm. We're moving beyond just chatbots or simple automations. Towards what? Towards autonomous AI systems agents that can handle really complex, multi-step tasks across the business on their own. Like what kind of tasks? Imagine an autonomous procurement agent. It wouldn't just place orders. It could negotiate complex supplier contracts, dynamically assess and mitigate risks based on real-time commodity prices, track geopolitical events that might impact the supply chain, analyze market forecasts, all autonomously. That's a massive leap in capability. It really is. But, and this is the link back with us, the success, the efficacy of these future agents will be entirely dependent on the quality, the richness, the accuracy of the context we feed them. So context engineering is the absolute prerequisite. It's the prerequisite. If the context is incomplete or stale or biased, the agent will fail, maybe spectacularly. Building these context capabilities is how you build scalable, defensible, AI-driven advantages. Which brings it back to leadership. The, the mandate for executives seems clear. Yes. Leaders have to champion this cultural shift, viewing data as a dynamic, strategic asset for intelligence. Yeah. And they need to sponsor the necessary investments, not just in the tech, but in the governance and the data foundations. So wrapping up, what's the core takeaway? I think the bottom line is this. The next decade isn't going to be won by whoever has the slightly better generic LLM. Everyone will have access to powerful models. Right. The winners will be the organizations that can most effectively harness their own unique proprietary data to build these deeply contextualized, reliable, deterministic AI systems. That's the real competitive differentiator going forward. That's a really clear synthesis. And it leaves us, and you the listener, with a pretty pointed final thought to chew on. If prompt engineering, the bit everyone talks about, is maybe only 5% of the real work for successful enterprise AI, mm -hmm. how much of your organization's focus, energy, and investment right now is truly aimed at the other crucial 95%, that foundational contextual data layer? Thank you for joining the podcast. See you soon.